over. So today is part one of my October 2015 favorites and favorites are where I mention like my favorite books, movies, TV shows, music, games, YouTubers, yada yada yada. They'll be in the description box down below, links to everything so you can check it out if it sounds interesting to you. Let's get started. First up is the books and the first one is The Book of David by Anonymous. If you've ever read Go Ask Alice, this is in a similar vein and this deals with homosexuality. It's really good. I'm not going to say what goes on in it because that would totally spoil it. But it's really good and I really suggest reading it if you're into like kind of reading about tougher topics. If you like YA novels, definitely check out The Book of David. And the next book is The Museum of Intangible Things by Wendy Wonder. Now I read her uh, previous book last month which is a lot better than this novel I have to say. But this is still a really good novel. I read it in a day because I was just so engrossed in it. This deals with bipolar disorder and first love, stuff like that. Really good. Again, not as good as her previous work, but it's still a really worthwhile read and it's really fast paced and interesting. So I highly recommend that. And let's see, let's go on to movies now. <laughs> just go in a regular order. Why not? Okay. So first up is Poltergeist, the classic, not the remake. Now, I would seen this a little bit as a kid, but it terrified me, so I didn't watch all of it. So I rewatched it. It wasn't as good as I thought it'd be. Don't hate me for that. But it's still really good. And I did enjoy it. And I do recommend watching it if you haven't seen it yet. And everyone pretty much knows the story about Poltergeist. If you don't, look it up, because I don't really feel like delving into it. But... If you like horror movies, definitely check out Poltergeist, the original. I think it came out in 1973? Yeah. It's good. I've heard the remake isn't. I don't know. I haven't checked it out. But, original Poltergeist. And secondly, this is the last one I have as a physical copy, is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now, I do have to say one thing about this. I was prepared for a lot of gore because everyone warned me about the gore, but then I watched it. It's not really gory to me. I don't know if I'm just desensitized or if it's just not as gory as people made it out to be. But, yeah. It's still good, though. It's about, you know, Leatherface. Leatherface! Leatherface. I can't say it like Johnny Tess does. <laughs> I'm terrible. But it's about Leatherface and, you know, the stupid kids and all that. So, definitely check it out. Of course, this is really interesting because it was inspired by Ed Gein and... Uh, Toby Hooper went to Home Depot and saw like chainsaws hanging, so that's where I got the idea from. I learned that in forensic science, people. Some things are useful from school. So definitely check out Texas Chainsaw Massacre if you're into horror movies and you haven't seen it yet. This is the original from the 70s. Maybe this was 1973. I know what. I think Poltergeist was the 80s, so sorry about that. This is from the 70s. Liz is a little confused right now, but she'll be okay. And I'm talking to the third person. Next movie, the next movie is Reanimator, and of course I just watched this for the first time. I hadn't even heard of it previously before this year, but it's really good. And of course it's based off of H.P. Lovecraft's story. And I don't really want to go into it too much because it would spoil it, but it's really wonderful. It's a really good horror movie. If gore doesn't bother you that much, definitely check it out. It's not for people with weak stomachs, but it is a really good film. I highly recommend it. Uh, next one, I don't know how you pronounce this precisely, so if I get it wrong, I'm sorry. Wormwood, Road of the Dead. It's like Mad Max and a zombie movie had a baby. And then this is the movie that came out of that. <laughs> but it's just, if you just want to watch something and, you know, you need something that's gory and violent, <laughs> this is for you. It's not heavy on story or anything, it's just action-packed and gory, but it's really good if you need to get your mind off of things. The next movie is The Guest. I really enjoyed this one. This is from Adam Wingard, the guy who uh, directed You're Next. And the guest is just about this guy that comes to this family. He says he knew their dead son, and then stuff starts to happen. It's better than I just made it sound like. And Dan Stevens reminds me so much of my friend Dave. It's crazy. I'm just like, oh my gosh, that's Dave the whole time. It doesn't help that the main character's name is David. So it's just like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, random shout out to Dave Control. <laughs> That's his channel. He's really good. Um, the next movie is Rosemary's Baby. Of course, this is the classic, not the TV remake. If you haven't seen it, it's Mia Farrow, Roman Polanski film that talks about Rosemary. She becomes pregnant with Satan's baby. It's really good, actually. 
it was a lot better than I thought it'd be. So now let's move on to all the dang TV shows that have started back up. Let me make sure I didn't miss a movie. Okay, I got them all. Yay, I didn't forget. So all the TV shows, I'm seriously having to read this because there's so many. I'm not going to go into details about them just because you can look them up, watch the trailers, whatever. These are pretty much all returning shows. But it's The Flash, Arrow, Supernatural, The Originals, The Vampire Diaries, American Horror Story Hotel. Okay, that one I can go into a little bit is about... This is the fifth season of American Horror Story. It's about all these people that are staying at the Hotel Hotel Cortez. Can I talk? No. They're staying at the Hotel Cortez. It's just really interesting. This is probably the most disturbing season yet, and they've only shown two episodes so far. Really good. If you're into horror and you don't mind disturbing, gory stuff, definitely check out American Horror Story, especially this season. Glee. Yes, I was a big Glee fan. I'm just now watching this, the final season. Jane the Virgin and I Zombie. So I'm watching all those shows currently and it's like, ah, TV land. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Next up are the games. And that would just be one and that's Far Cry 4. I'm just now playing this. I got it for my birthday and I'm just now playing it. But it's really good. It is very similar to Far Cry 3 if you played that, but still all fun. Open world, you know, story's not the biggest focus, but it's just a lot of looting and just going out in the open world and seeing what happens and all that. Really good if you like open world adventure games. But be warned, it does suffer the Ubisoft curse of having to climb up a dang tower to unlock more parts of the map. That gets on my ever-loving nerves. Ubisoft, come on. And lastly is the YouTubers, and that's just one I'm going to mention, Everyday Geek. They're so cool. It's um, a dad and a daughter, and they do like different kinds of things like Funko Pop hauls and movie reviews and unboxings and stuff like that. They're so adorable. Go check them out. They're just a really lovely family. And that's my favorites. I know I didn't go into too much detail and I'm not as peppy as I usually am going through a little bit right now, but I'll get better. And I hope you enjoyed this and let me know what your favorites were this month because I'll totally check them out. Uh, like the video if you liked it. Like I said, comment down below. Favorites of your friends family. See, share me as long as you do it nicely. And remember to subscribe because I love each and every one of you very, very much. And you've gotten me through some really tough times. So thank you. Just thank you so much. Peace and some more kisses. Bye.